Hello, and uh, welcome to my game, Forest of Zarn. Um, this is my first game that I've created that I really kind of want to get out there and kind of make public. I intend for it to be kind of free, really just be free, no gimmicks, no nothing. It's more or less a learning experience for me and probably hopefully for other people that want to look at my stuff. Uh, I have a GitHub repository uh, at Megaman Expert. And it's uh, for Force of Zarn. It has my uh, Unity scripts, a prototype uh, slash XML tool that I use, kind of help you know help what I have most of the uh, background scripts for this. So I have down here about four buttons with these wonderful uh, stretch textures of uh, wood. As you can see, I'm not a very good artist. I pretty much just did pixelize to a, a forest image and uh, kind of, well, yeah. Here is the player creation screen. Um, currently right now, I only have a few options. I hope to flush it out more as it kind of goes on in progress for development. Uh, for right now, it's kind of good for what it, for trying to showcase some of my scripting prowess and, uh, some, you know, hooking up to models. The model I'm currently using uh, on the right hand side of the screen is uh, from Daz or Daz 3D. They uh, have a whole bunch of nice models and whatnot. You gotta pay money for them and there's a license attributed to them. Um, it's about a $500 license to use all the Daz uh, produced ones and probably additional $500 or more if you use anyone else's you gotta get permission. That's kind of why I don't have this game, you know, the source code and everything else for this game done in Unity, uh, posted up online, mostly due to licensing and not wanting to get in trouble and wanting to, uh, you know, honor people's licensing agreements. So far right now, it's kind of a placeholder stuff. Maybe I can get a 3D model or get into the uh, learning curve of uh, 3D Studio Max. Um, First off, I want to show off is the sliders over here. I have it set up so that way you can make someone thinner, heavier, using the same model um, by using blend shapes. So that way you can actually, you know, well, I'm using a very high poly uh, model. I don't, I didn't bother uh, decimating it, depreciating or decimating the uh, polygons from it. So it's the stock one. I think it has over a couple hundred thousands of polys and uh, vertices so it's probably not something I really want to sit there and release for an actual game that would you know people's machines would start screaming <laughs> trying to render all those and the draws and whatnot it's probably not optimized but one 3d model and the whole thing I can sit there and mess with the uh, slider body tone was supposed to be like more muscular but because the shirt doesn't really quite show it very well <laughs> Uh, I probably should just remove the shirts. Um, I also have here default. It's set to this uh, question mark, which is just a default Genesis, uh, I guess, model. But the blend shape for the Genesis allows me to do more of a female, male, back to kind of gender neutral. And then here we have our race selection. And um, just using, I just kind of have a drop-down list I kind of grabbed off a wiki that someone provided for that one. I also provided that as a script and not in credits due where it's credits due. Um, so basically I have a list down of different races. Believe it or not, I have the uh, one model with blend shapes, changing out textures and uh, setting everything up. I can actually have one model represent multiple races, doing multiple, you know, so that way I don't have to sit there and load individual models for each different race. Just had to change their blend shape from one, you know, bipedal uh, model. Of course the camera needs to be kind of worked on because it's kind of hard to sit there with a the perspective. And various other races are different sizes and whatnot. Um... Yeah, this one I had actually two different body types for it, and I found out that if I try to incorporate the female blend with the female uh, 
I guess, blend for the anim for this animal. I guess the jaguar it kind of had some serious clipping issues, so had to kind of differentiate that. Kind of, you can see it in the code. Uh, over here we have our stats. Um, I really just wanted to initially just do four. I might add more, might add other things, but uh, for on basically the anti of, you know, or well, more or less strength, another word for strength, vim, vitality, acuity, I guess, wit. Um, there is a pool of numbers that this pulls from. I probably want to display that number and so that way people can mess around with it. Right now, it really doesn't... Default starts it at 10 and allows you to go up. But more or less, you can kind of play with the numbers, make them kind of really min-max if you really want it to for this, if I ever want to get into it. Um, of course, you can't go in below 2. I think I have it... Uh, Max out at 24 or 20. Yeah, max is out 20. So, um, I believe Vim will play into your vitality or brawn or endurance. You can add your name here. That sounds like a good name. And we'll just go with mail. I will make it a uh, line. Create. Yes. Alright, here's where the main crux of the game is that I really kind of worked on and really want to shine. Um, left side shows like stats. I plan to do more actions with that, with up these buttons up here for drop, save, main menu, uh, inventory, and other mechanics of the game that I've yet to flesh out. But anyway, stats are displayed over here, it says what race, it says your name, it says how many hit points you have, how much endurance. It doesn't play quite well into what I have currently built into the game. But the biggest part of it is this giant screen here in the middle. Um the Forest of Zarn use it actually loads its story in through an XML document. Um and then kind of parses through it. So it's kind of treated as a pseudo script in a sense. Um, it's more or less used to help people who haven't done programming or who kind of get get like intimidated by programming and some scripts and stuff that they just really don't want to, you know, touch it. But they always have these great ideas. They just want to write these stories, but they just don't have a way of expressing it. So I figured that if I can do an XML document, post up an API, and some, you know, try to keep the words small, the jargon as little as I possibly can, so that way maybe someone in the future will want to uh, kind of play through it or make their own game when I release it to uh, public. And who knows, maybe people can, you know, share around these XML files that I have included with the game that they can make their own games and just simply by sharing these text files. It makes it easy for, you know, redeploying the game because I don't actually have to redeploy the actual physical binaries. I just have to just, if I want to get a story change, just add in the XML. Easy, you know, simple text document, not too big. And then, of course, patching might end up having to be a thing in the future for the actual game itself I'm um, upgrading the API to include uh, like taking into account the stats, combat, various other things. Anyway, um, the buttons here are dynamically generate are basically dynamically loaded. If for whatever reason a the conditions or whatever for the buttons uh, you have set are not supposed to show them, they would always try to show all the buttons starting the you know left. So if this scene actually had five buttons and one of them was hidden and it was between north and east, then it would be then, you know, hidden and you won't be able to see it. Um, though I believe I have it set up so that way you can have 12 buttons, but eh, you can have more. They just might end up going off the screen or something like that and or just not showing up. But right now it's about 12 buttons. Um, 
the current uh, default store I have with it, I don't think goes beyond six buttons at any given time. Uh, I don't think there's any real conditions in it except for the starting screen, which just basically is, you know, my change log and whatnot. So yeah, forces are, and you can sit there and read. Um, if the text happens to go all the way down to the bottom, you get a little bit of a scroll bar to the right. Can't really show you with this because I don't want to move my screen around and really screw up the aspect ratio. But you can move east, south, north, south. Wow. I'm to get myself lost. Um, ooh. managed to get to one of my uh, scenes. Um, I'll probably end up showing my XML, how it's kind of set up, but it's basically, I have titles of scenes. It does a string uh, search for those scenes. They are unique. It makes it so that way you can, people can just kind of label them and make sure they keep their stuff straight and make sense instead of trying to call numbers and indexes and then yeah it, it just makes things a lot more difficult structure ooh the old well this had a couple of weird things I kind of designed my scenes kind of like the old uh, King's Quest uh, I guess strategy guides where they basically printed out like a flow chart that goes from flows from one screen little box screen to the next that's how I kind of visualized this and whatnot. I can get a little bit of 3D, I guess, if you want to kind of go under other scenes, but really it's all kind of a giant map of sorts with nodes. North. Cabin inside. There's a fireplace. There's a bed. There's a chest. Ah, go ahead and break it open. Oh, looks like I just kind of uh, killed my set self. Um, there's two. The stock one has like two ending, bad endings, and one good ending. It's up for you to figure out which you know what it is if I ever release it. But that's pretty much about it. Um, I hope to have a debug where it basically is going to have the character select, but because it has debug open, you'll be able to sit there and select your screen, your scenes. Your, all the races, all the parameters, and everything else that you could possibly, you know, it, it's basically, I guess, a developer's console and a screen GUI, because people who, like, sit there and make their games and whatnot end up love just dealing with consoles and stuff. Easier, but probably not going to be uh, very for this kind of style of game, or at least how the methodology of doing it. So that's about it for it, so uh, stay tuned for more development builds and hopefully uh, if I can afford the $500 license so that way I could probably at least release it or get someone to make me a couple of 3D models, humanoid 3D models with certain blend shapes in it and hook it all up again. Um, yep, that's about it.